All right, so now that Flutter Web is out, responsive layouts are becoming super important and something you basically have to do for every single app. In this video, we're gonna cover eight, that's right, eight different ways of responsive layouts and different widgets that you can use in order to create very nice layouts on all platforms. So let's get into it. So we're gonna cover each of these in a theoretical aspect, and then I'm gonna have code for almost every single one of them except for one because it's too simple to even need code, I think. So the first three you probably already know, but the last five I think don't get brought up enough and I'm gonna cover them here. So let's go. Media query, I'm assuming most of you have heard of. It pretty much you can get the width of your screen and perform actions based on that width. I don't think we need to cover much more than that. And then you have layout builder. So this is a builder widget that returns the constraints and you can change your UI based on the constraints. It makes doing what you did with media query, I think even cleaner and easier. Orientation builder. This one tells you what the orientation of your application is. I don't think much more needs to be covered in this. Basically, if you're sideways, you can display one sort of UI. If you're upright, you can display a different type of UI. Now this one was a brand new one for me. It actually took a little bit of time to learn, but it's the custom multi-child layout. I think this can be more easily explained through code, but a quick little summary, you basically delegate the building of your layout to a function, which has access to all the children. So you can adjust the layout based on what different children are there, and you can have the layouts based on one of them. It's a little bit complex, but it can definitely come in useful if you want very custom layouts. Custom single child layout is the same exact thing as multi-child, but for one child, to be honest, I'm not sure when you would necessarily need to use this one, but we'll cover it. Then aspect ratio, let's say you have a square with an aspect ratio of two to one. This ratio of two to one will never change no matter the size of your screen or anything like that. So if you make the screen bigger, it'll adjust, but still stay with that ratio of two to one. Fractionally size box, you have a screen. Let's say you have a container here. You're saying this takes up one half of the screen. This takes up one third of the screen. These fractions will stay consistent no matter how much you resize the screen. And then the last one is fitted box, which we won't show any code for it just because I think it's simple enough to understand from a drawing. Let's say we have a box and let's say we want to show an image in here, but the image is too big for the box. So you wrap it in a fitted box and you could do box fit dot fill. That will stretch the image in order to fill that specific box. You can do box fit dot width, which will make the image big enough to fit width wise. And then there's a whole bunch of other types of box fits that let you fit the image within the box, however you want. So right now that's covered. Let's get into the code and show you the demo app with all these layouts. So I've done with the code. I separated each screen into a different type of layout concept and we'll go through it. We'll walk through it and it should be pretty simple. I think to understand this is the main layout that we're going to be working with. So you see, it looks like an app here, but then it gets big enough. You have a navigation rail instead of a top bar, and this could definitely be useful for something like a phone app and a web app. If it's on web, you'd probably want it to look more like this because it's easier to navigate. And if you're on mobile, you don't want it to take up too much space on the side, so you have something like this. So the first concept is media query, which is the most basic and simple one. With media query, you do this media query dot of context dot size, and then you can get the width or you get the height. Once you have that data, you can maybe set up a Boolean variable. So on this one, we're saying if the width is less than 500 pixels. And then based on that Boolean, we could display different things here. We're either displaying the app bar if it is a small screen and then not displaying anything if there's nothing. And same thing with our content. We're either displaying the navigation rail in there or we're not displaying it depending on how wide the screen is. And you could do that with both sides. So not just the width, but height, even though it makes a little bit less sense here. So if it's 500 pixels, you want it to be like that. If it's less than 500 pixels, it'll update this way. So you could do it both ways. Now the next concept I think is a little bit simpler and makes your code a little bit cleaner. It's the layout builder. Layout builder pretty much does the same thing we just did with media query, except it contains it and kind of organizes your code a little bit better. So this, you wrap your content in a layout builder, which has a builder parameter where you get the context and the constraints. And here we just check the maximum width that we can have. If it's under 500, we display this type of layout with an app bar and no navigation rail. 
then otherwise if it's not less than 500 we display the navigation rail and again works the same exact way so the next one is an orientation builder which works in a very similar way to the layout builder you wrap your whole ui in this orientation builder widget which has a builder parameter just like the last one but instead of constraints you get orientation so this orientation pretty much gives you an index for what orientation it's at and Based on that, you can build different UIs. So now here we launched the app on an iPhone and you can see if we go to the orientation builder and we turn it, we'll get a nice UI like that. Obviously we'd probably want some safe area here so it works a little bit better, but if we do it this way, everything looks nice and it adapts based on what orientation our phone is in. All right, so this next one is the custom multi-child layout. This is the more confusing one and more complex one but it's also the most powerful one if you need to do something really custom. So once again, we wrap all our content in the custom multi-child layout, and it looks like this. And inside, you'll notice two things. We have a delegate. So this controls the layout of the children, and the children need to have a layout ID. So every child in here needs to have layout ID and a specific ID. It doesn't have to be a number. It can be anything. And then the actual widget we want to display. So you pretty much assign an ID to each one of these children, and then your delegate function will be able to find the children based on ID and then update the UI however you want it from there. So let's take a look at what our screen looks like. We have widget one and widget two. So here's the actual delegate that controls the way we organize the layout. And we need to overwrite two functions. One's called perform layout, and the other one is should relayout. This one, I just have it set. If it's not the same, just redo it. But this perform layout is the main function for this delegate. So this perform layout has access to three different types of functions. One of them is has child. So you can check if this child is even available on the screen. And you can obviously perform layouts based on that. Then you have the layout child, which actually sets the layout for that specific child. And then you have position child. So what we're doing here, we're checking if it has child with an ID of one, which it does. And we're laying it out with box constraints of loose. And here, if we have a child with ID two, we give it its box constraints and we update the layout. And lastly, we position this second child with an, with an offset of the width of the first child and the size halfway down the screen. So see, you can manage the layout completely from this. And if we didn't put it halfway, it would be up there. Since we did put it halfway, it's over here. If we remove widget one with layout ID one, you'll see it'll get updated accordingly just to be at the beginning. So it's really nice because you can lay out your UI algorithmically. So based on whether you have specific IDs and stuff like that, you can adjust how your layout looks. So that one becomes really crucial if you need to do something pretty complex. And if one widget depends on another widget, this is what you would need to use. Now there's a custom single child layout widget. It's pretty much the same thing, except instead of children, you have one child, but you again can control using a delegate. I'm not too sure when you need to use that, but if you ever run into a scenario where you need to algorithmically lay out one widget, then um, that's what you should use. So now we have the aspect ratio and the fractionally sized box, which are pretty simple to explain. Aspect ratio here, let's say we define an aspect ratio of three to one. It will keep this aspect ratio no matter how we resize the window. So this three to one ratio will stay no matter what. We update this to, let's say four to one. Let's see, I'll get a little skinnier and it will stay this size no matter how your window looks. If we make it one to three ratio, it'll look like this. And then again, we can resize the window all we want. And I'll keep that ratio. Another one that goes kind of hand in hand with that is the fractionally sized box. You probably use the size box widget. It's pretty similar, but it uses the screen as a fraction. So let's say we want it, want it to only take up half the height of the screen and half the width. Then we have this nice cube, and even if we make it nice and tiny, it will just take up half the height and half the width. And no matter how big we make it, no matter what size we do, it will always take up one quarter of the exact screen. Of course, you can update this to whatever you want. Maybe you want there to be a nav bar, an extra nav bar that's one ninth of the screen definitely use this fractionally sized box. And then if you need to fit something within the box, use fitted box. And there we go, that's all the different ways you can have responsive layouts and flutter. And with all these eight, you should be able to accomplish any type of layout you want. I actually don't think there's 
many more ways to do responsive layouts other than like packages and stuff. If you know a standard Flutter way to work with responsive layouts, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching.